All right, here's our video, the yellow jacket sting and how the body reacts to the venom. What happens when this poisonous venom gets inside you? And if we look at the yellow jacket, it's an aggressive wasp. It's the most aggressive wasp. It's probably the most aggressive stinging insect. And it's not a bee. You know, bees are vegetarians. You know, yellow jackets, are, they're omnivores, right? They'll, they'll eat meat, other insects, and sometimes they like their sweets, as you probably know from the picnics. And they can sting multiple times. And by the way, a bee could sting multiple times also. Um, only the honeybee can only sting once because it loses its stinger. But the bumblebee could sting multiple times. But for the most part, bees are not that aggressive. It's a yellow jacket that can be aggressive. And so there's that stinger over there. Let's get our pen working. Nasty stinger, which I experienced actually today, taking one for science. I was stung actually three times by the same yellow jacket. Made it mad in the morning. And it, it, it hurts, definitely. It definitely is an ouch. It's like a little more than an ouch. You'll, you'll say ouch in a few choice French words, perhaps. But anyway, this venom, and by the way, only the female sting was, so we should write down that it is a wasp, not a bee, and only the females sting. Only the female will sting. And so they have this venom. It's called mastoparin. Because when you're getting stung, you don't really care. You might care. Maybe you have an allergic reaction to mastoparin. But the yellow jackets will release mastoparin, this venom. And once it's inside, and by the way, it's just a peptide toxin. Once it's inside, your body is going to go to war to get that venom out. And what the venom is doing is actually killing the cells. It'll destroy the plasma membrane, immediate cell death. So your body wants it out. And we'll look at how that how it does it. All right, here's another picture of that yellow jacket, female yellow jacket piercing the skin. Look at that stinger. So when it does pierce your skin and your body's going to react, the first, and by the way, the process is called envenomation. That's what it's called. You're being, venom is coming inside your body. So inside your skin, you know, you have these things called keratinocytes, which I'll talk about. They're cells in the epidermis. The epidermis is your skin. And these keratinocytes will sound the alarm. And we'll look at how that works. And here's the body at war killing that venom. Little AI picture. And make sure we have our pen working. So here, the keratinocytes, they're sounding the alarm. They sound the alarm. If you notice, also in the picture right over here, dead keratinocytes. That's just the top layer of our skin. Top layer. Now, these keratinocytes, the first thing they're going to send in, they're going to make uh, cytokines. I'll write that over here. Cytokines. And cytokines are just proteins. And what the cytokines are going to do is they're going to call in the cavalry. They're going to call, right over here, they call in, well, they call out for help. Little exclamation mark. And they're going to call in the white blood cells. And we'll talk about three white blood cells in this video. We'll talk about the mast cells. We'll talk about the neutrophils and the macrophages to get that venom out, to get that pathogen so just to review right now, we have the first line of defense. We have, first of all, our dead keratinocytes. But as the venom comes in, we'll use red for venom, or maybe yellow. Choose yellow for the venom here. The venom is pouring in because the stinger pierced the dead keratinocytes. And now the, the living keratinocytes sound the alarm by making um, cytokines. And the cytokines are these proteins that will send signals for the white blood cells to come. The army's coming. The Marines are coming. And, and one of the first to come will be the mast cell. And the mast cells are white blood cells. And they have two things that they're going to do. Let's make sure we have our pen ready. We'll use red. Stick with red. So the mast cell will call in the neutrophils. 
and the neutrophils are the most abundant of the white blood cells. Usually the first to arrive, but then the mast cells call them in and they're releasing histamines. And these histamines actually will call in the neutrophils. But the histamines, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get something out of your body. And when you have an allergy, there's too many histamines in your body. Sometimes your body notices a pathogen that's not really dangerous to you. But your body's going to release histamines also. Anyway, so it's, it's trying to make you sneeze, make you itch, make you tear, you know, cry. Do something just to get whatever's on you or in you out. That's what histamines are doing. And like I said, when you have an allergy, sometimes there's nothing harmful. It's a pathogen, but it's not really harmful. And histamines are just over working in overtime and you're sneezing, you're tearing up, you need some medicine to stop it. But for this venom, the histamines are actually calling in the neutrophils. So the next part will be the neutrophils. So just to review so far, the venom has entered your body and the keratinocytes will release cytokines and the cytokines will call in the mast cells. The mast cells are white blood cells. They will release histamines and these histamines will call in the neutrophils, which you're seeing here, a neutrophil, which is also a white blood cell. And the neutrophil's job is to destroy the pathogen. They've got to eat the toxin. They're going to eat this venom and die. Now, also, one thing about what histamines will do is they'll allow access for the neutrophils to get into the tissue, too. So that's something important to know. So after the neutrophils die and clean this up, we need the macrophages to come to eat up all these dead cells. So let's write that down, macrophages. And it's the macrophages come from a Greek word meaning big eater. And that's what they'll do. They'll just eat the dead cells. So we'll say, eat the dead cells. And you notice sometimes that in an area with all this inflammation, you'll get red because your body's at war. And sometimes you might see pus coming out. And that's just the dead white blood cells. And, you know, and the macrophages are eating them. And then your body is in the repair mode to repair any damage, any cells that died. By the way, if you're just wondering how big the white blood cells are, you know, neutrophils are much bigger than bacteria. So if a bacteria enters your bloodstream, like here's a little bacteria, it's probably a little bigger than that. The white blood cell is much bigger and it will come and swallow it. All right, that's our video today. Just a quick review on what happens when you become envenomation. Envenomation, again, is when venom has entered your body through a sting and your immune response.